So here's one of the fish I made. This was a prototype when I was experimenting with uh, different ways of uh, making an attachment for the belly. Uh, you want to be able to have one hook off the bottom end of the fish and one hook off the middle because as a lure, as a fish come in, they're going to potentially go grab for the middle part. So you want to have a hook there to catch them. So this is just an example. When the bead is all done and annealed, you will be able to put a wire through it and wire wrap it and have a loop on the back end, which you can attach hardware and a hook, and a loop on the front end where you can attach a swivel and you know whatever to hook it to your fishing line. Okay, so here's what we're going to need to make the fish lures. You're going to need some sort of a twisty with uh, black in it or the dominant stripe color that'll go down the side of the fish. You're gonna need just a commercial white stringer and a red stringer for the eyes. Uh, you're going to want to have a thin pulled stringer of uh, some sort of black. I'm using intense black 066. You're going to need a color for the belly of the fish. Uh, for this one I used a sky blue color Fetri number 224. You're going to need some sort of a transparent clear. I'm using 004, I think. Um, you're going to want two color, complementary colors of transparent. I'm using a light blue transparent 056 and a cobalt blue 060. Pretty much any color will work. It's a very versatile um, design. In terms of other items, I use a fine powdered frit. Uh, this is Scarlet Earth from Valcox Fritz, but you can pretty much use any color you want. And then I have down on the plate here some mica, gold mica flakes, and I get those from um, Hawako Glass. Okay, for the tools for this, you'll need some sort of a masher. It can either be flat mashers like this, or you could um, use uh, a stump shaper or something and, and press it flat against uh, brass or graphite, whatever you used to. Uh, you'll need some sort of a little dental tool or something for pressing down some details. You may or may not need a little pair of tweezers. So I'm going to be using some gold mica flakes from Hoako Glass. So I just take a little pinch of it and kind of sort of spread them out on a marvering pad. I don't want them in a clump. I want them kind of spread out over an area. That's it. So to make the little staple hook thing for the bottom of the fish, I just took a short piece of wire about a centimeter and a half long and I am holding it with my pliers and folding up the sides to make it into that standard little staple shape. Make sure that you are using a stainless wire for this. So I just prepare that in my um, grabbing pliers. And I want to kind of hold it sideways like this so that it's all ready to just be inserted into the glass. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to light up my torch. If you're using a lighter like this, you want to keep it in a safe place away from flying glass because it can explode. Mine is kept in a closed drawer. Okay, so we're going to start with our mandrel and we want to get the uh, mandrel hot where we're going to attach our uh, glass and get our fish started. We're going to be adding glass in layers so it will, gl it will grow. So once your mandrel is hot, your bead release should turn white and you can probably see a bit of an orange glow. That's good enough. And that helps keep bubbles from forming. So let's start by placing our footprint. And we're just essentially going to wind on a cylinder bead. So the fish shape is going to be fatter in the middle. We are going to press this a little flat to give it a bit more of a 2D appearance. So we have the base bead on. What we want to do is build up the middle section where the belly of the fish is. As I'm winding on the glass, I turn my uh, the glass rod a bit and to heat it from different sides, it just tends to go a little bit faster that way. I'm gonna smooth it in a little bit, heat it up, let it melt in, get rid of some of the ridges. 
So you might want to marver this a little bit once you've got the shape heated up. So to uh, something of a conical or a barrel shape, tapered on the edges and a bit fatter in the middle. When you make the fish, you're going to want to have a little bit more on one side than the other. That way that part will hang down. So you can use gravity to help pull more glass onto one side than the other. You can sort of see I've got a little bit more on one side than the other at this point. Let gravity pull it down a little bit. Okay, now we're ready for mashing. You take it out of the flame, let it cool just a second, and mash it. Okay, so next up we want to add some frit to the top edge. It'll kind of give it some speckles. So I'm going to just dip into my frit bowl and just add a little bit of frit there. Melt that in to get a little bit more on the other side. Move the frit a little bit and get more on that side. Okay, get it a little bit hotter. It didn't stick very well. There we go. A little bit more on that side. There. Okay, that looks good. I want to melt the frit in. This is a dark red color. It doesn't really matter what color you use. Just something with contrast. You want to probably for this size bead go with a small frit size. This is a number one frit. So it's a fairly small grain. Okay. I'll let that cool a little bit. So next we want to pick up some of the gold sparkle on the side. So I want to get one side good and hot. Fishes are attracted to sparkles for some reason. It glints in the water. I have it laid out on my marvering pad here. Now I don't want to put that back in the flame once I uh, get get it on the bead because it'll burn it out. It's mica. Oops. It is a um, a rock basically, um, but the gold color will get burned out and turn black. I also have tried the silver tone mica, but that in the heat just turns kind of a white color. It doesn't stay silver. So I'm getting a glather on the end of my glass rod and what I want to do, keep my bead warm from the back side, is just swipe it in case and cover the gold. One big good swipe. I need to get another gather and get another good swipe on the side to cover it up. Keep my bead warm in the flame while I'm doing my gather here. And put another bit of clear on it. Okay, so I've got my gold pretty much in case, so I'm going to heat that up and kind of press it flat a little bit and work that in. Okay, so next I want to get that melted in a little bit, and then I'm going to heat the back side, and I'm going to go back down to my marvering pad with a hot glass bead and pick up some gold flake on the opposite side. Now from putting the glass on and mashing it, there's a little bit of a concave area. You can kind of see where there's that cool area. So I'm going to kind of press it a little bit and, you know, make it a little round. That way it'll be easier to pick up the gold mica a bit. So I'm going to get... All right, so now I want to just add a little bit more clear over the turquoise, just to make it look a little bit more uniform and to have it, have it match the other encased part. So I'm going to prepare a little bit of a gather and kind of do a snowplow push technique. I'm not going to worry about getting too close to the bead holes because I don't want to make a mess there. Now I want to heat this up and get it to flow and fill in and get nice and smooth. And the next step is going to be to attach our hook. So I prepared a, it looks like a little staple ahead of time out of stainless steel. It's just basically a little U-shaped hook. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bed that on the fat side, the belly of the bead, the belly of the fish, and that'll let me put a little connector and another hook there in the middle. 
Because from what I understand, when fish are going after lures, they don't necessarily go after the tail end where you, you can hang a hook off of there. They go for the fat part in the middle, so you want to have a hook in the middle. So this will give you a good embedded attachment point. So I have them in my tweezers. I want to heat the end up just glowing hot, just that way it's got a good bit of heat. And then I want to heat up the belly, and then I'm going to essentially press this thing right down into the belly, just like that. So, just like so. So now I have that attachment. It's embedded in the glass. It shouldn't go anywhere. And I can attach some hardware. You may need to, you know, take your tweezers and straighten it up a little bit while it's still good and hot. Okay, so for this bit, uh, fish, I'm going to add some uh, blue sh shadowing and shading on the top. So I'm going to start with my lighter color transparent blue. And I'm going to uh, swipe on some transparent just on the top side of the fish above the gold flake. It'll be covering up the red frit that I put on earlier. So I'm going to add a couple of swipes of the lighter blue, and then at, just at the very top, I'm going to add the darker blue. There's a bit of a swipe of a lighter blue. And you, by building up the different color transparents, the, sh the shaded transparents over the clear, you get a nice graduated color effect in the fish, and it'll vary from dark on the top of the fish uh, to light on the belly. It can be more pronounced if you used a white belly fish as opposed to the light turquoise or the light blue that I used on this one. When it all melts in, you, you almost don't see the edges of where you apply the transparent, so it gives you a really nice, naturally looking, graduated color. I found you can just take any colors and mix and match them. They all come out looking pretty cool. So we started, wanted to start with a fairly small base bead because as you can see, we're adding lots of layers of glass. So it's getting to be a pretty big lure. These are called crankbaits and they sink, obviously, because they're heavy and they're designed to be under the water, attract the fish, uh, not uh, attended to be like a fly fishing bait, which would be a very lightweight bait. So... think they're going to be used for rockfish or bass here in the Chesapeake Bay area. At least that's where my nephews go fishing. All right, so I'm going to melt that in and kind of melt down the ridges a little bit. Maybe take my little dental tool and pull some of the clear towards the mandrel a bit on the edges here. Remember, if you're using a thin tool like a dental tool or a or a knife or something, the thinner it is, the hotter it gets fast, so you may need to quench it in your water more frequently than a thicker tool. Okay, now I'm going to take my darker color blue and add just a few more stripes on the top to give a little bit more of that you know, color gradient on the fish. So for this fish, I'm going to add a little bit of a, um, a decoration. I'll add some stripes going down the side. So let me melt that in. So what I'm going to do is add this twisty, and I'm going to put it right about um, right on the bottom edge of that first light blue clear or transparent that I put on and right above where the gold fleck is. I'll just apply that front to tail, and this is just a simple ivory stringer with some black. I want to press that down flat and just make some interesting stripes on the fish. And I'm deliberately pressing this down and letting it widen a little bit, a little flatter. It looks like an interesting stripe on the fish. And I'm going to add one on the other side, so... I'm not worried about getting too close to the nose or the mouth end because we're going to be adding some gills and an eyeball and other decorations there. All right, so now I want to put a little bit of time into shaping up on the, the nose area, kind of clean this up. And let it uh, kind of go down to a little bit more of a, a fish shape on the top there. 
remove my tool and bring it in a little bit closer to the mandrel, bring the clear around a little bit. And I will do the same on the back end. Okay, so now we're gonna take our black, intense black stringer and I'm gonna just basically draw on a semicircle for the gill from top around to the bottom, just like that. Just a little horseshoe or a semicircle. The other side, I'm gonna do the same, just a semicircle. There we go. If you didn't have a twisty, you could use the stringer and add some stripes that are sort of parallel the gill from front to back along the fish, give it a little bit of definition. I'm gonna melt that in. Okay, so for the eye, I'm gonna give it a big eye. So I wanna put a big opaque white dot where the eye goes on one side and then on the other side. And I'm putting it right about in the middle, uh, around where the end of that twisty was, but you know, you can put it wherever. I'm gonna flatten that out a little bit. And I'm going to add a tiny dot of red. You don't need this, but it kind of makes the fish look cool when they got that little bit of red around their eyes. So add a dot of red. And then we're going to add a black dot on top of the red. So I'll take my intense black stringer and heat it up and add a dot in the center of the red. And then take my little dental tool and flatten that out as well. We'll flatten it out and just leaves a, just a bit of a ring of red around the outer edge, which looks kind of cool. If you wanted to, you could add more colors. You could add, you know, purple transparent on the top, make it get even a little bit darker. You could put the colored transparent on top of the twisty if you wanted to. That. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add a mouth to the fish and it's not a mouth to make it look like a mouth it's a mouth this big protruding thing what happens is as the fish is going through the water the water flows over that and it makes the lure wiggle and the wiggling of the lure um, attracts the fish um, you know the light can glint off of the mica flakes and create sparkle and attract fish So I am going to create a clear gather. You could use any color. You could use the blue too if you wanted to. I'm going to use clear and just attach it right down here where his chin would be. Not quite enough. There we go. Enough glass. Okay. So I want to get that good and hot. And I'm going to take my tweezers and just flatten it. Just like that. Sort of like a big protruding chin. And add a little bit of heat. We cooled it quickly with that pressing motion. Okay, there we go. One lure about to go into the kiln. All right, so I'm going to show how to wire wrap a fishing lure. So you start with your fishing lure bead, and it has a little thingy on the bottom that will take a hook. And we're going to put a stainless steel wire through it and do the wire wrap. You want about an inch and a half to two inches longer than the bead itself. So I'll take that out and get started. I'm going to use my chain nose pliers, 90 degree bend. Make a loop. I like to use the base all the way, the largest diameter of it. Okay, so now we want to do a wire wrap and take that tail. Since I'm using stainless steel safety wire, it's fairly stiff, so to do the wrapping, you probably want to use a pair of pliers like this. You want to wrap it up tightly. Wrapping it to the end, or you can just snip, snip that little edge off. And I just take my Pliers, don't use your good jewelry pliers. Make sure you use ones that have a titanium or whatever it is, strong insert for cutting steel. A little bit goes in the trash. 
and take my pliers and just wrap that little edge over it doesn't snag you. Now we're going to put that on the bead. So that's the loop in its mouth and then we're going to make a second loop near the tail. We're going to take the chain nose pliers and again all the way in the back, the largest diameter, I'm going to make a loop. So it comes out 90 degrees like that. This wire is a lot stiffer than the head pin wire you use for jewelry making, so it takes a bit of a strong grip. Okay, I'm going to cut that tail end off. I want to split it open like that. My split ring pliers. Um, get it just beginning the loop. So uh, you get the loop hanging on just on the beginning and then you take your pliers out of there. It's still holding on. And we take our regular pliers and we can just wrap it in place like that. Again. Okay, get my pliers out of the way. And let's get that loop wrapped on. And the next stage is to put some hooks on it. So when you're all done and you attach some hooks, your lure will look something like this. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to see a lot more of my mom's beautiful lamp work tutorials. And also remember the opportunities are as endless as your imagination.